So now we will talk about C++ string class. So a string class is a special data type that support working in C++. So it's not like all different data types, it's special data types. If you want to use strings, uh, and for sure a string like you can store uh, sentences or words or uh, a string of characters inside the string. If you want to use string class, you should write at the beginning of your programs include hash include string. In the same way we write uh, include io string, but here we want to include the string class. So we can define string as the following. We write the word string and then space and the name of the variable. So in this example we are defining two variables. The first variable is called first name and the second variable is called uh, last name. We are defining two variables of, of type string in the same line. We can also give values to the uh, variables as the following. So the first name we write equal or assignment operator as George last name as Washington. So in this way we give values to the string variables. If we want to print string so we write C out and then we write the name of the variable. So here it will bring print the value of this variable which is George and then space and then we will print the value of the second string which is Washington. So this is a small example as you see, because we want to use a string class, we added a new uh, include for the string class. So we now include IO stream, include string, and use namespace std. And then this is the main uh, function. And if we want to define a new variable of type string, we just write string movie title. And then we give a value for this string which is like wheels of query. This is the name of the movie. And then if we want to print C out, my favorite movie is, and then we print the value of this variable. So this will be the output of the program. In the second section, in the next section, we will discuss the floating points data types. So data types that deal with floating points. So we have three data types that deal with floating points. The first one is called float, the second one is called double, and the third one is called long double. So this type, they deal with numbers like that have decimal points, like for example, 12.45 or minus 3.8. So we can store them like this, or we can store them in scientific notation. We will discuss in the next slide. So all floating point numbers are signed. So it's not like in the integer we have signed integer and unsigned integer. We have signed short, unsigned short. So here all these types are signed. So we don't have unsigned float or unsigned double. So what's the difference between them? Float is four bytes. So we can store numbers but with less precision and with less range of numbers. But doubles we can uh, store more, we have more bytes, so we can store more numbers, uh, range, and more uh, exact number, and the precision is, is much higher. So that's why it's called double. And this is the most famous uh, data type for floating points number. So it's the same like we use int for integer. Here we use double for floating points. And there is something long double precision. It's 8 byte in some compiler, but in other compiler it's 10 or 16 bytes, so you can store more exact number, but we don't need that. So mostly it's enough for us to use double. Uh, how we can write floating point literals? Remember literals is the value of the floating points. We can write it simply like uh, the, the decimal point notation. This is number 31.4159. Or we can write it like this, but we also can write it like in the e-notation. E-notation, it's like, this is 31, we can write it 3.1, e1. e1 means multiplied by 10 to 
the power of 1. This we can write it like 6.2 e minus 5, which means 6.25 multiplied by 10 to the power of minus 5. So this number is similar to this number, it's just we wrote it in a different way. So we can use any way you want. So all the literals are double by default because as we said, double is the main floating point data type in C++. So if you want to force literal to be a float, you just write F at the end. If you want to force it to be a long double, you just write L at the capital L at the end of this number. So this is example. Again, we include IO stream using namespace. So we didn't include string because we don't want to use string here. So we have the main function. We define a variable of type float, another variable of type double. We give them values. The floating literals we use like the scientific notation E11, which means multiplied by 10 to the power of 11. Same thing here. And then we print this variable in the middle of some sentences. So here is the output. We will see that we get the output in the scientific notation as well. So the next section is talking about the bool data type. We have a new data type called boolean. So it's bool. So the bool data type represents values that are true or false. So the bool variable can take only two variables, two values, either true or false. The bool variables are stored as small integer. So the false is represented by zero, true is by one. So actually when you uh, write bool all done equal to true, you, st you don't store true, you just store one, which mean one means true, and zero means false. So this is a small example. Again, include IO stream using namespace, the main function. Here we define a variable. The name of the variable is bool value. It's of type bool. And if the bool value, we give it a true, this means it will have a value true. So if we print that value, it will not print it true. It will print one. One means true. If we change the value to false and print it, it will print zero. So here we use the same variable to store true first, print it with one, and then store false and print it with zero. Next section to determine the size of the data type. So the size of the data type, if you define like a variable of type double, it's a double amount, and then you print the size of, this is kind of operator, if you write size of double, this statement will give you how many bytes you have in the double. So in the double, remember, we have eight bytes, we said. So it will print eight. And also, if you write size of, and then you write a name of a variable, it will tell you how many bytes is for this variable, how many bytes is, is there for this variable. So double, this data type. So in the size of, you can write the data types, like double. If you write double, you will get eight. If you write integer, you'll get four and so on. Here, size of a name of a variable, it will tell you this variable is using how many bytes. So because amount is double, so it's also will print eight. Okay, so you can try it. Size of, we can use it with the data type or with the name of variables. In both cases, it will tell you how many bytes I need for this, whether the data type or the variable name. So the next section is talking about variable assignment and initialization. So assignment operator, we use this assignment statement equal sign. We use it to give it to store a value in a variable. So when we say item equals 12, so this means we want to store the value 12 in this variable that has the name item. So this statement assigned the value 12 to the item variable. So the variable receiving the value must appear on the left of the equal operator. So in the left of this operator, we should have a variable name all the time. It's wrong 
to write a value in the left and a variable name in, in the right. We can also like uh, define a variable and give it a value, initial value in the same line. So to initialize a variable means to assign a value to it when it's defined. So it's in defined in this line. Normally we write int length semicolon, but here we want also to give it initial value. So int length equals to 12. So this means like define a variable of type integer, call it length and give it initial value 12. We can also like initialize more than one variable in the same line with the comma. So we write int link equal to 12 and width equal to 5 and also define area but variable but don't give it initial value. Okay. So here we define three variables. We give initial value for two and for the third we decide not to give it works. So this is example include IO stream using namespace std in the name function here we define two variables we give it initial values we give them initial values and then we printed both variables so here is the output so the next section is talking about something called scope so the scope of the variable is the part of the program where the variable can be accessed so one big rule a variable cannot be accessed before used before it's defined so we have here in this example we define int value equals to 100 so we define a variable of type int the name is value and its value is 100 so we cannot use this variable before it's defined so this will bring us error if you try to print the variable before you define it it will give you error but normally you define the variable and after that you print it so that's why we say the scope of this variable from the part it's defined to the end of this function so from this line till the end of this function we can use this variable we can give it values we can print it but before that out outside this scope we cannot use the variable next section is talking about arithmetic operators so we have three types of operators in C++ usually the arithmetic operators to do some mathematical calculation numeric calculation we have three types of uh, operators first the unary operator it's like kind of operators that can be applied to one operand to one number for example minus 5 this minus is applying applied to the 5 only we have binary operators for example this minus because it's between two numbers 13 minus 7 so it's like you do some calculation between these two operands and we have ternary uh, operators that take three things so we will study this operators later when we take the if else statement but this operator in general take three things one two three okay so let's discuss the binary operators we have addition plus minus subtraction star as multiplication uh, slash as division and this percentage as modulus so the addition we all know is the addition 7 plus 3 is 10 7 minus 3 is 4 7 multiplied by 3 is 21 7 divided by 3 so here normally if you do it in the calculator 7 divided by 3 is 2.33 uh, or something but here we do only integer division so 7 by 3 will be only 2. We'll ignore the points because it's integer divided by integer, so the result has to be integer. So we have to ignore. Even with the result normally is 2.9, we, ju we just write 2. This is how the integer division is working in C. We have something called modulus, it's the remainder, sometimes we call it. 
it tells you if you make integer division 7 divided by 3 normally the result is 2 but what's the remaining after the 2 so you divide 7 by 3 the result is 2 so how much is remaining 1 because if you multiply 2 by 3 you get 6 so to get the full 7 you need one remainder so this is how the remainder is or modulus is working 7 remainder 3 or modulus 3 means 1 because you can divide 6 by 3 and then 1 is remaining this is like a simple example to show you just the operators I will not go into details because it's not important details so here we, divi we define how many variables 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 we define 7 variables of type double because this is our floating point some of them we give them initial values so remember we are doing here commas so this all thing is one statement in C++ we can write it in multiple lines okay and here is semicolon okay so anyway we define uh, these variables we give some of them initial values and here we change the value of some variables like regular wages we make some equation multiplication of two variables so this re pay rate is 18.25 it will be multiplied by regular hour rate which is 40 so the result will be stored in this variable and the same so when we print them we will get the result of the what we print okay so again this is this explaining what we explained before if you want to do 13 divided by 5 normally in the calculator you will get 2.6 but C++ will ignore this and give the result of 2 if you make 91 divided by 7 it's already 13 the result is 13 but if one of the operand you make it as a float you, know, you write 13 divided by 5.0 this means you want exact result it's not integer divided by integer anymore it's integer divided by float so the result will be float and it will be the exact 2.6 it's 2.6 yes here if you write float divided by integer the result should be float although it's 13 but the result will display 13.0 to show you that the result should be a float modulus we explain how the modulus or remainder works like 13 modulus 5 so how many 5 are there in the 13 2 5s right and how many remaining after getting the two fives is 3 so that's why we get 3 in the modulus both of them has to be integer if you make 13 modulus 5.0 this will be error because the both operand of the modulus should be integer next section is about comments so comments is used to document parts of the program it's intended for person reading the source code so if someone want to read your source code or, or you want to read your code after some time so you, you want to remember why you did this why you did this part of the program why you write this function why you wanted to mix a variable so it's really helpful to explain some sections of the code these comments are ignored by the compiler so it doesn't matter what you write in these comments the compiler will ignore them but it's good for the person who is reading the code so we can start the code the comment by double slash okay so if you start double slash in the middle of the line it will ignore everything after it okay so here this is ignored as a comment this will be ignored if you start it at the beginning of the line everything will be ignored till the end of the line okay so this is single line comments we have multiple line comments this multiple line comments you can start with backslash star everything will be commented until you end this with star backslash so you can make 10 lines comment using this 
backslash star so everything between them is commented you also can make them in the one line like you start it here and then you end it here okay but for this maybe it's easier to make double backslash but anyway we have two two ways to write comment in C++ this is typically typically helpful for multiple lines in C++ the next comment the next section sorry is named constants so in the name constant or sometimes we call it constant variables it's a variables that we cannot change the value of them so it's something similar to variable but we cannot change the value this is used of representing constant value with descriptive name so imagine the tax value is this it's a fixed number the tax in Saudi Arabia is 0.15 for example so it's fixed everywhere the tax is 0.15 so in the program if you want to use it just make it give it a name instead of writing all the time this value give it a name how to give it a name same like uh, variable def definition so we write const const is this is a keyword we have to write to tell you that this is a constant not a variable and then you write the data type of the constant then you write the name we have convention to write the name all capital letter if you write it small it's correct but all the programmers write the constants in capital letter to show that they are constants and then you give it this value so what is different about constant if you try after this definition to change the value you will get error so this protects you from changing this value because this value is constant it's not supposed to be changed same here const int number of states equal to 50 so the number of states in the United, in the United States is 50 states so this will not change okay so usually we use our cases to name the constant this is example again a nice example for constant like uh, in mathematics the value of by is fixed so instead of using it all the time just give it a name by constant double by equal to this and then you can use it in the calculation right same like diameter maybe it's fixed so you get it 10 and then you can use it in the calculation so the nice thing if someone in the if the programmer later try to change the value of by equal to 3 you will get error okay this is the idea of the constant programming styles so it's important to write a nice code clean code a readable code so how we can do this we should organize our code the code should use spaces tabs and black lines these empty spaces will not have effect on the c++ language so c++ will ignore these empty spaces but they are nice to make our code readable and nice looking nice so for example you should when you should braces they should be aligned okay they should be aligned in the same uh, place if you want to use indentation okay you you should use indentation if you don't use indentation it's correct but to be readable it's uh, nice to use indentation use black lines okay and if you have very long statement very long line make it in two lines okay this is make it more readable last thing to discuss uh, in this lecture about standard and pre-standard c++ so we have older style c++ programs in the past we we used dot uh, h so if you want to include io stream you write dot h dot h mean header but now we don't use it anymore and in the past we use uh, define to define a constant so we define a constant before the program before the main uh, function so and also we don't use the namespace in the old uh, standard of the C++ if you want to use this the old standard maybe sometime it will not work with our compiler but sometimes it work for example this is like old style uh, C++ of defining the constant so you define the constant before the program 
So previously you define it here, you write constant double by equal to 3.1, but in the old C++ you can define it here, okay? But it's not important, we will just define it in the main method with the new style. So that's it all for uh, this chapter and see you in the next lecture.